more I look into it, I feel like your work is somehow pretty feminist at the time. Yeah, I, I already have uh, some kind of a uh, gender awareness at that time. I hate seeing men hitting women, you know. I just, I just feel uh, the women are victims. So that's why I made an installation called uh, Room of a Woman and Her Baby. And was uh, in silent form of a prison. The baby and uh, the woman, there's no figure in it actually. But it's only just a, a room in, in a kind of a prison. Up until now, most of the Indonesian men are male chauvinists. Now, uh, the gender issue is actually uh, refused. So you can see they're just joking, you know. What is woman? They still people who are joking, through joking women like this. You can immediately see there is male chauvinists with wheels. And then you have, uh, uh, again, sharp things geometrically. It showed the uh, penis. A lot of penis of men, very aggressive. That's kind of work. I don't know any kind of discourse, at least from my experience. These works are shown at the, the Paramount exhibition. But amazingly, no people took attention to the work. A lot of people were there. They are not aware that these, they are not the exhibition itself has failed. But for me, it's not any more important because I'm not an artist anymore. <laughs> ah, so showing Paramount. It's quite interesting for the fact that your lectures in ITB or your seniors, they were somehow not unsupportive for those type of works and also for the fact that it's exhibited in the so-called public space, a non-gallery setting. I mean, compared to the Jogja seniors, who were pretty unsupportive that they had to expel some of students for such cute protests like Black December. Another tendency, the geometrical, geometrical works. No, I think uh, they were important because you can relate them with the late modern. So the late modern, you have this uh, uh, geometrical work, so the minimalism, and those kind of things, and conceptual work. In Jogjakarta, the same, like I said, most of the artists are believed in, in emotional expression. Uh, when artists started to make geometrical work was uh, uh, criticized by the lecturer. At that time, Anyol Subroto and Harsono Group already made some kind of a plan to organize an exhibition of Jogja Bandung who, who made at that time geometrical work. Fajar Siddiq at that time is trying to make abstract painting, meaning following Bandung. And he was accused by all of the Jogja lecturers. In Sukarno time, uh, all of the Indonesian visual things are black and white. You don't have good books, you don't have good design, you don't have any American films. It was only just Russian and mostly Japan only. Very anti-American. So and suddenly it's open. And... Now it was Jogja people who, who, who promote the realistic painting. Actually, because the education making realistic painting is still is still on in, in Yogyakarta. In Bandung, they don't practice again. It was obsolete for them. How far back is it necessary to trace this so-called bandung Jogja tension or opposition in the context of Seni Rupa Baru? Nowadays, I tend to see the, the difference as the, the Jogja poll shows the mainstream of uh, Indonesian art development. And the Bandung School is actually a marginalized uh, marginalized uh, development. They are aware about that uh, art is universal phenomenon. They were founded by the Dutch artists. So that's why they are very Western. The Jogja Pole was uh, directly connected to a powerful group since the beginning, Sukarno time. I think up until now, they are very nationalistic. Uh, I think until 60s, before the change, the, the great change, uh, 65, they are very anti-West. That's why the Bandung school is some kind of uh, traitors. They, they are not nationalists, those kind of things. 
in uh, 65 they changed then Indonesia from the communist from the left side into the right side now <clears throat> uh, when they started uh, with the right side actually the Bandung school was promoted because of um, the government they like uh, apolitical works and this modernist since the beginning they are apolitical <laughs> no because of a uh, artist universal <laughs> after the change they built the the parliament house the parliament house was actually the center of the new emerging forces so <clears throat> when they built the the parliament house they asked artists to to make works inside so all of the artists who made the the commission work in the parliament house was bandung artists seni rupa baru had become a meeting point between bandung and jogja young artists I don't think there's another conscious effort to meet these two seemingly oppositional poles. Then how did Jakarta become the meeting point? After 65, all of Indonesia faced the official art pieces talking about identity, the great Indonesia, you know, pre, uh, celebrating the power of uh, the government. Taman Ismail Batsuki was founded by a radical governor Ali Sadiqin. Now later he was captured by the by the the power. <laughs> so he guarantee you can talk anything if we see some kind of artistical development. Black December is more political. So and then uh, of course it triggered the the gerakan seni rupa baru. Taman Ismail Batsuki, you have the rebellious spirit. Actually, this is an honest spirit against a very pretentious whole condition of culture. There was already a spirit uh, to find a real art, more honest art, those kind of things. When the Seni Rupa Baru emerged, of course, some people support the, the rebellious. The media, they are supported, uh, not in a sense rebellious to the government. It's a cultural, it's a cultural rebellion, some kind of, it's supported by the people. Frankly speaking, the, the, the Seni Rupa Baru people, they just do something. There is no motive to, to make influence, to spread the, the ideology, those kind of things. Just a rebellion in that sense. In those three exhibitions, you got that, uh, the same condition. Uh, especially because of uh, uh, the Seni Rupa Baru exhibition in the beginning in 75, after us was the exhibition of the Santa immediately after the Seni Rupa Baru. So I, I can remember uh, the Seni Rupa Baru uh, artists after they take the, the works. Oh, we are waiting for transportation and Seni Rupa Baru is, <clears throat> was very poor. And then the, the, the Santa people, they came with cars and with group of people and the artists just showing okay. the center very organized everything was organized everything was put uh, putting uh, plants uh, around the exhibition it was beautifully uh, done comparison with the with the seni rupa baru exhibition and then nobody ah, came the silent majority but who 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 were the ones coming to exhibitions at the time anyway what were they looking in exhibitions or what kind of aesthetic were they? Sanato tried to see as a new movement that showed not just a contradiction between schools. So at that time, people always talk about impressionist, impressionist, expressionist, with abstractism rules. And at that time, I think in, in, in the Western world, they started to see the late modern as a, a development. He tried to put that the development before Seni Rupa Baru, before the new art movement, is, uh, he called it lyricism. The Jogja school and the Bandung school, despite they are fighting each other, actually they are followed to the lyricism. And then he used that the, the, the Seni Rupa Baru movement is uh, not just a contradiction, it's a, a totally change leaving the lyricism and uh, at that time he used uh, the Edward Bulo aesthetic theory. The lyricism came if you see a work you have a psychological distance. Now at the new art movement this is particularly similar to the to the West 
So talking about the concreteness and actualization. So the space, there is no distance. The works is installation, those kind of things. There is no distance. There is no frame. There is no base. A sculpture, mm. yeah. He wants to identify the Gerakan Seni Rupa Baru and show this is a new development. It's not just contradiction of the latest schooling. This is the term of contemporary art. And you can see this is the similar uh, rebellion of the conceptual work. In the case of the Project 2 exhibition, which was the last exhibition uh, named Seni Rupa Baru in 89, how did it happen? Were you personally invited as an artist or were the movement invited? Uh, I was recruited to Tempo Magazine. At the same time, the desk editor who usually write about health, who had connection with because I was some kind of expert. Gunawan Rumot, you take the, the position. I don't know either. I don't know about anything about health or those kind of... No, you have to, to be there. What's the reason? You are a son of a medical doctor. <laughs> he said, you crazy. What's the connection? I said. <laughs> but that's the first time I put uh, over there and I started to learn actually about health in a short time. At that time, uh, I I started to uh, make studies about AIDS and nobody nobody took attention. And I write already, I wrote already articles about AIDS before they found that AIDS was caused by virus. Then at that time, I started already to, to speculate about the, the virus. It's not because of the homosexual of those kind of things, you know. I was connected directly to the UNESCO and they provide me with information. 